Well, Alzheimer's disease is, uh, in most cases, in which we, we call the typical AD uh, cases, uh, patients will suffer from memory loss, episodic memory loss, which is related to the, uh, um, the hippocampal uh, circuits, neuronal circuits. And this uh, happens because uh, pathology um, is uh, the, the first place where the pathology in the brain uh, appears is uh, around the hippocampus and a few of its uh, connections, like the entorhinal cortex and the perirhinal cortex. And uh, as time goes by, the pathology will spread to other areas of the brain, mainly cortical areas, of course, and we will see other features of AD, such as uh, disorders of attention, language, executive function, visual spatial function, and also uh, praxic, uh, praxis. Uh, uh, and uh, there are a few cases uh, in about 10 to 15 percent of patients in which AD will be atypical. Uh, with regard to clinical features. Uh, in this case, uh, there are uh, actually three uh, different phenotypes. One of them is called the posterior cortical atrophy. And in these patients, it, it is uh, the, the most common uh, underlying cause uh, of PCA is, is uh, Alzheimer's disease, although there are other causes, uh, of course. But uh, there is a progressive decline in visual, spatial, visual perceptual and praxic skills. And the pathology will affect mainly the parietal, occipital, and occipital temporal cortices. And this, the symptoms will typically uh, begin between the 50 and 65 years of, uh, of age. Uh, there are also two other phenotypes. One is the language variant, what we call logopenic progressive aphasia. Um, uh, these patients have slow, spontaneous speech and they have frequent word finding pauses and paraphasias too. So there is impaired sentence repetition and variable comprehension deficits. Uh, the third phenotype is what we call the frontal variant uh, of, uh, of AD. And it's very, very similar clinically to what, what the, we see in the uh, um, frontal uh, variant or, beha or behavioral variant of frontotemporal dementia, frontotemporal level degeneration. So these patients have disproportionate executive uh, personality and behavior change relative to other deficits, such as memory deficits. And uh, there is, uh, in imaging, there is a disproportionate frontal atrophy. We often uh, see patients with uh, um, deficits are quite variable. I mean, the uh, typical uh, AD case is not that typical from patient to patient. So we, of course we see uh, the, the memory, the hippocampal memory is, is lost in most cases, of course, but it will also influence other uh, uh, deficits will also influence memory. For instance, if a patient shows a uh, disproportionate deficit of attention, of course, memory will be uh, also affected because patients will also learn the ability, to, will also lose the ability to learn new information, not just to retrieve uh, uh, older information. The most important question, uh, or the most important issue is um, how to diagnose these patients as having AD pathology, because many of them uh, will uh, be, I mean, clinicians will, will see these patients and think of other disorders. For instance, when someone sees someone, uh, a patient with a frontal, with frontal variant AD, uh, they are inclined to think about the uh, behavioral variant of frontal temporal lower degeneration. Or if someone sees uh, a patient with the uh, logopenic aphasia, uh, then all other uh, um, language variants of uh, FTLD will also come to the, the clinician's mind. So. Uh, it's it's very important to to have a, uh, a complete neuro examination and a thorough neuropsychological uh, assessment, so that the the deficits are uh, well characterized. And then, in many instances, the diagnosis will be achieved only through the, uh, through biomarkers uh, by using biomarkers. For instance, if you uh, have uh, an amyloid pet, uh, brain pet, or 
if you do the CSF uh, examination and measure the biomarkers. And then in that instance, you'll be able to tell if the person has AD or other um, disorder. 